We're almost finished with this series. We're on lesson number 31. And I think we have two more left and we'll be bringing it to its close. Christ for the crisis. Our thematic text for this series is Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12. And it says, a what? A prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. And the simple pass on and they are what? They are punished. And we are told our thematic quotation, Mrs. White says, we who know the truth, we should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world as a what? And Peter says, if the righteous are scarcely saved, and where do the sinners and the ungodly sense? So tonight, beloved, as of always, our prayer should be, Lord, hold, hold, Lord, hold back the crisis because we have so much to do in such a short time. Early right on page 120, Mrs. White says that she saw the remnant. They were not prepared. She says, stupidity, like a lethargy, seemed to hang upon the minds of those who profess to believe that we are having the last message. My accompanying angel cried out with an awful solemnity, says, get ready, get ready, get ready. And we're told that procrastination, brothers, is a thief of time. And we are told if we do not now act, we will be forced to react. We are continuing our um, um, end time chart and we are still under the Jacob's time of trouble and we are still under the voice of God. Now tonight's lesson is a very encouraging one. It may be a refresher course for some, maybe new for others. We are looking at the special resurrection. Now, when last we left off, we left off under what voice? The voice of? The voice of God. Now, there are, we list about eight things that will transpire under the voice of God. Now, question, what, what plague does the voice of God sound under? The seventh plague, right? Now, all these events will happen simultaneously under the voice of God. We learned that it marks, not in your handout, but a revision, it marks the greatest earthquake in the history of the world. Two, it marks a time for the special resurrection. We're going to cover that tonight. It marks a time of when God's law will be seen in the heaven. It announces the day and the hour of the Lord's coming. Right? It marks a time when the, another outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is not the earlier or the latter rain. This is another outpouring which prepares us to, be, to withstand Christ's brightness. Right? We learned that last week. It also marks a time when the wicked will bow before the feet of the 144,000. And it marks the time for the greatest battle in the history of the world, the Battle of Armageddon. Now, tonight we're going to take a brief look at it. what will happen, another event. It marks the time for the special resurrection. Now, beloved, we know that in the Christ that is coming, let me just kind of give you this chart. We know that the reality is that um, even before the National Sunday Law is passed, many of God's people will die. Amen? And Mrs. White says, we had a whole lecture called Martyrs. You can go back on that one, but she says, when the law is passed between here and here, many of God's people will lose their life. Many of us will have to lay down. And she says it also um, in this, not in your handout, a quick revision. She says in volume 5, page 712, she says, there is a prospect before us of a continued struggle at the risk of imprisonment loss of property even what of life itself to defend the what so many of us tonight here maybe have to we have to yield up our lives for god i don't know but there is a struggle of loss of life itself as the crisis hits and so many of us will have to lay down our lives many children for to defend the cause of god but there is hope in the book of acts we find a wonderful a comforting statement, Acts, not in your handout, Acts 26, verse 8. The Bible says, uh, Luke says, uh, the Apostle Paul says now, why should a thing, why should any of you consider it incredible that God should do what? Should raise the dead. You know, what a marvel. And as we look through, as we survey the entire scripture, we have seen where God has actually raised many who have died and it is a comfort for us. I think about the first person who was raised from the dead. Who was that person? Nope. Very first person to break the fetters of the tomb. Who was that person? Come on. Come on, Adventists. Moses. Moses was the first person. 
first person to break the fetters in the book of Deuteronomy. Not in your handout. This one, I left this one out about Deuteronomy um, 34, 5 and 6. The Bible says, so, so Moses, the servant of the Lord, did what? Now, why did Moses have to die? Why didn't he have to die? Talking to somebody. We need a, a Mr. Kosh will help me out now. Because of what? Slight error. Uh, but what, what was the error? What did God tell him to do? Speak to the rock, and what did he do? And why did he? Because of the, pe the people caused them. And one sin, Ellen White says it, it was God's intent for Moses to be translated over Canaan, but you know he had to fall under death's fetters. And the Bible says, and he, and, and he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab over against Beth Peor, but no man knew his sepulchre even to this day. So he was buried, but God missed him. And we're told, we're told before his body could see corruption. It wasn't like no two, three years. Right after, before the body could even decompose, God missed Moses. And in the book of Jude, we find the resurrection. Yet Michael, El is the prefect for, for Jesus. The archangel, when contending with the devil for the body of Moses, they argued and God resurrected Moses. And we see him now on the Mount of Transfiguration. And we know that this event is not in the Old Testament. You're not going to find that event in the Old Testament. He's actually quoting from a, from a pseudo, pseudo a, 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 a extra book out of the Bible that this event happened. This is, but it's a real event. The record? The record? The event was yeah. from the Old Testament. No, it's, it, you're not going to find this. This record? No. Right. It's not in the Old Testament. It's actually from, I probably should have put it in. Um, um, it's from, I forgot it, but it's an it's a extra-biblical book, which is authoritative also, but it wasn't canonized. But it's a true event, so don't look in Moses for this. You're not going to find this book in, in, in Exodus and Deuteronomy. It's not there, but it's a, a, a bona fide event, right? So God resurrected Moses. But then we have others. We had another one, the widow of Zarephath, raised by Elijah. In 1 Kings 17, woman had her only son, isn't that right? And this woman was very good to the prophet. And the son fell, uh, fell in a mortal sickness and he died. And Elijah raised the young man back to life. And then even his mentor, Elisha. The woman had a son. And uh, the little boy went out to... The, the woman was, was, was... They were good to the arm, um, to the prophet. Uh, they built a little room for him. And act whatever you will. And ask for a child. And what happened now... Uh, the boy went out, my head, my head, my head. And he took him home and the very room that she built for the prophet was the very room that she laid, he laid the boy on. And the very thing that you give to God may be the very thing that brings life to your loved ones who are lost in sin. What a blessing, right? And then we had, a, this is a strange one. Uh, this is very strange. Uh, there, was a, there was a burial. In 2 Kings 13, 21, a man was died and and the man tossed into Elijah's tomb, a dead man, and he, he woke up. That's in the Bible, you know. I mean, but this is not some Star Trek. This is actually in the scriptures. Right? So we have a, a litany of a resurrection that has transpired through the Bible. We move on now to the New Testament. The widow of Nain. I'll tell you something, boy. The woman had her only son. And I'll tell you something. The young man died, and Christ was passing this burial procession in Luke chapter 7. And he stopped the funeral, broke up that funeral session, and woke up that young man. I, that woman was eternally grateful for Jesus to do that. And then we have in the book of Mark, uh, the synagogue, Jairus' ruler, a 12-year-old girl. Uh, she fell sick, and Jesus went there, and they laughed him to scorn. Yes. Laughing at Christ, that, that, that's neither safe nor wise. And he put them out of the room and yes. said his word in, in um, didn't spoke English, he spoke um, Aramaic at that time. <laughs> And life. And I could believe that Jairus was also grateful for a 12-year-old girl. And it speaks to us that for those who have lost children, that is hope. We will see them again. But how can we forget Lazarus? Um, this was a house where Christ loved to visit. Yes. Lazarus had fell sick. And they thought he would have come on time. But he's always on time. Is that right? Yes. And in the book of John, chapter 11, Jesus rolled back the stone and Lazarus came forth and then after Christ ascended even the disciples actually kept up the resurrection isn't that right Peter who did Peter rose Tabitha Dor who was Dorcas 
She a lady who worked and she made clothes for those who are less fortunate. She would take her stuff to yes. Belgrade, Sister Pearl, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and help those people. And, and the lady died, man. And come on, she was missed. She was sorely missed as you read in the book of Acts. And Peter had, listen, man, this lady had a work to do. And Peter came and Peter, this is real, you know, brought her back to life. And then what a blessing. Then we have the young man called Eutychus. A warning for those who like to sleep in church. <laughs> uh, somebody said, well, Paul was preaching too long. You shouldn't preach long sermons. But never the case, Eutychus, a little boy, fell in the window. He fell asleep in the window, right back and forth, broke his neck, and he died. Paul came and rose him back to life. A blessing. And then, but all of these who died never had immortality. No. Up to this, uh, apart from Moses, but apart from the, him, all of those who, who were resurrected, they went, went back, back to sleep. Amen. Right? Keep that point. And then now, we have this, the men that were raised up um, when Jesus, uh, at his death in Matthew 27, yes. they went into the city and they preached to many. Yes. Um, they, they stayed on earth for 40 days, you know. Yes. Isn't that something? Yes. For 40 days, they remained yes. on earth. Why would God have to use them? Because the disciples were afraid. They were hiding, so God had to raise up the dead proclaim the gospel and for 40 days they, they appeared to many the Bible says and white says they differed in stature early writings page at 147 I think is the reference 147 she says they differed in stature and from the dispensation yes. and they preached the gospel of Christ was the Messiah and then when he left to heaven he took them and I believe that these people helped comprise the 24 elders some may differ but I believe that the 24 elders were human beings and not angels as other hold that view. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I, I do like that point, Tilda, in that um, I, two quick thoughts here. Mm -hmm. I, pertaining to those that was resurrected with Christ, mm -hmm. I personally believe, and there's some record to confirm that, that many of the prophets mm -hmm. was resurrected mm -hmm. in that number. And in the case of Christ, uh, raises Lazarus. Mm -hmm. uh, it is determined that... Um, uh, Lazarus's family, mm -hmm. comprised of his two sisters, mm -hmm. were very good friend of Jesus. Oh, Tells me the importance of good friends. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much. Right. So, so we we have that the resurrection is something real. Right now, we're going to pinpoint it now to a special resurrection. Now, question number one now says now how many resurrections are actually mentioned in the Bible? Now, as you survey the scriptures, there are three. But we only focus on two. Fill it in now. We have what is called the first resurrection, right? Now, majority of the Christian people will get up in this. Well, I should say all of the Christian people. True, majority will get up in this one, right? Revelation 20 verse 6 speaks of a first resurrection. This is scripture, right? This is scripture. And then we have what is called a second resurrection, right? This is a thousand years in the future. Right? And the Bible speaks of it um, in Revelation 20, verse 5. It doesn't mention a second, but it mentions a second death. Now, a man can't die a second time unless he lives at least twice. Isn't that right? You have to have at least lived twice before you can die twice, right? So if you have a second resurrection, then for the, for the second death, for a second resurrection, right? So there is a first, and then there is a second. Now, this is what the Christian world and unfortunately, most Adventists, they stop right here. But the Bible speaks of another, which is, which, is, which, is, which is special to us as a people. And here it is, we call it, fill it in, we call it a special resurrection. Fill it in. Some call it a partial resurrection. Um, and there are ample scriptures that support it. Revelation 1 verse 7. We'll look at these texts in a moment. Daniel 12 verse 2. Matthew 26 speaks about it. And Revelation 14, 13, all these texts hone in on a special, not the first or the second. Go ahead, Brother Castro. Uh, I, would, uh, no, I would look at it since this is going to happen first. Pardon me? The, the partial or the special resurrection yeah, is going to yeah, happen yeah, first. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, I mean, they're not in order. I just, I just listed. Okay, okay. They're okay, not okay. in order, but thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. They're not in order, but they will happen in order. But on your screen, they're kind of out of order. And they probably should have been in order. Thank you very much. Right? So. Here we are, there are three, it's biblical, but tonight the Christian world only focus on the, well, they don't focus on anything anyway, if you ask me, but, but when they do speak, they only focus on the first and the second, but they never 
I've never heard this on TBN or, 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 or Daystar or Hope Channel. Not even Hope, not even the Hope Channel anyway, we hear about it. Unfortunately, our own network. Go ahead, sir. Unfortunately, we haven't heard about this one, even in our own frame. frame. We're going to talk about it tonight. Go ahead, sir. Because, uh, you know, I, you know, like when I listen to other churches talk, I heard about one resurrection. Yeah. Because first they said the people who were saved will be caught up. So All if right. they're caught up, they don't need to rise again. You're right. So it's only one resurrection. Right. So they don't have a first and a second. Amen. Because they say you can fly away and you go home and, you know, you can rapture up. Exactly. So if you're raptured, you only need to rise again because you're already up there. All right. Now, so tonight, we're not going to focus on the first or the second. We're going to focus on the special. And again, the special or the partial, it happens under the voice of God. You, you need a mic, sir. All right. Let me get... Go ahead. Go ahead. In light of that... um. The partial, I, I realize that there's not too many can speak of it because there's a sense of misunderstanding. Yeah. In other words, they don't understand how it come about to begin yeah. with. Yeah. So as a result of that, you're not able to explain it. Yeah, and but, it, but it's right there. It has been there. It is, and it's a blessing for us, and it's unfortunate. And as a matter of fact, you talk about this and they call you shepherd's rod. They label you because we're not studying and it's a very, very unfortunate, but it's in the scripture, right? And we're going to talk about it. Now, question number two now says, now, what kind of people are resurrected in the partial or the special resurrection? Now, I'm going to look at the text very quickly. Revelation 1, verse 9. Look at it now. It says, sorry, um, Daniel 12, uh, verse 2 says now. Now, again, this text is not the first or the second. It's the partial. The Bible says now, right? And many of them that sleep, sleep is death, in the dust of the earth shall awake some underscore some not all some to everlasting life and some underscore not all some to shame and everlasting what now how do you know this is not making reference to the first resurrection you, you need a mic you need, this is important you need a mic give him a mic how do we know that this is not making reference to the first resurrection now this text because this is in this right in the, in this in this when these are rows, uh -huh. they'll be both those to those to death and those to life. All right. While in others will be those to life. Okay. And then the second will be those to death. So well, Brother Cultural is saying that the first resurrection and the second has a thousand years interval. Is that clear? So those who get up in the first don't get up with those in the second is a thousand and separates them. Right? But in this resurrection, it lists Two class together. It says some to life and some. So just from deductive reason, it tells me in this resurrection, some righteous will get up and some who? Some, it says everlasting contempt. So this pinpoints two class, some wicked and some righteous. So the answer, fill it in now. The answer is a select, fill it in now, a select few of the righteous dead. Fill in the word or, or fill in something. It should be righteous. It should be right, yeah. Yeah, my, yeah my, my colors are off tonight, right? So for those who are watching via live stream, it should be, you're filling in the yellow, so it should be righteous, right? So a select few of the righteous dead and a select few of the wicked dead. This is the partial, not the first or not the second. Do not confuse them. All right? You need a mic, Ella, right? So... We have a scripture base, right? We have a scripture base for the partial. Is that clear? And I'm going to give you more text as we go on, right? Now, question number three now says now, do the scripture give us any clue? Scriptures give us any clue as to which righteous, follow me now, and which and wicked dead will be resurrected in the special resurrection. Now, we've learned some righteous, and so, but, but who, what kind of righteous? Is just any righteous, any wicked? Here it is now. Revelation 1 verse 7. Again, this text is a special resurrection text. The text says now, Revelation 1 7 says, And behold, he cometh with what? This is the second coming now. And it says now, And every eye shall what? And they that also what? Pierced him, focus on pierce him, and all the kings of the earth shall wail because of him, even so what? Amen. Amen. Now, this word P 
pierce him is a crucial word. Because the fact, fact of the matter is, all those who pierce Christ, this has to do with his, his death. So are they alive today? So when should they, when, when should they get, get up? Technically, they should get up in the, in the second. So, but the Bible says, no, no, no. God's going to reserve some of them. So we know the wicked who will get up in the partial, those who pierce. And we're going to explore that in a minute, right? Pierce him right now. So we kind of focus on the wicked now who will get up. Go ahead. You need a mic, please. You need a mic. You need a mic. Help us out, please. You need a mic. Because people are watching and we want your, your comments to be, um, to be made. And I'm going to explore that a little, little further. Go ahead. Part that says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Uh -huh. This is the second coming. That, okay. th this is then. This is the second coming, right? Okay. But we know, if, if look at it now, those that pierce him are the wicked. And we know that pierce him means those who were a part of his, 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 his crucifixion. They are dead. This is, this is, this is 30, 31 AD, man. This is, he comes with the clouds is in our daytime. So all of them should get up after the thousand years. But it is linked to his second coming. You see what I'm saying? So this is a partial resurrection text right here. And I'm going to show you more, right? Matthew 26. Now all these are in your handout, right? Matthew 26 now. Christ is before um, Caiaphas, right? And he's been interrogated at what, what date is this now? About 31 AD. Follow me now, right? And look what Jesus says now. But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest, I think it was Caiaphas at the time, answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Look what Jesus says now. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Caiaphas, or Annas, which one it was, Hereafter, ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, coming into what? What event is that? Now, is Caiaphas alive or is he dead? Was he wicked? So when should he get up? Technically. No, he should have, he should have gotten up after the millennium. But God said, no, 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 no. You're going to see him come. So this text is a partial resurrection. Because everybody in 31, this is about 31 AD, they're dead. Are you with me? You see the text, right? Right? And then the Bible says now, then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, Thou hast spoken blasphemy, and uh, what neither did he crucify him. You, you, you see the context. So the high priest was one of those who actually pierced him. He had a part in Christ's crucifixion. Okay, he needs a mic. Brother Cotchfield, stay with us, all right? Okay, one more. So, so we know who the wicked, we know those who the wicked are. Those who had an intimate part in the death crucifixion of Christ Jesus. You see that? Go ahead, sir. Quickly. I, I, I wasn't ready to make the point, but since the opportunity. Now, um, what I think is going to be proven there is the fact that they denied or rejected Christ mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So the Lord and uh, the Father is as if we're to pro going to prove a point. Prove. Yes. You know, so there will be no question. And Except again, it will be way too late. And again, these were the teachers. These yes, are the leaders. Of, of the days. They, they, yes. So they yes, should have, these were the men who had the scribes and they had the oracles. He was the high priest. For, he was like the general conference president for like a word. Right? So those two texts proves a partial. Look at the words. Not the first, nor the second. This is the special or the partial. Right? So we know who's getting up. Those who... Pierce him. Now, that, that's the wicked. Now, let's see those as... Go back to Daniel. Remember Daniel said two class? Daniel says, some to everlasting life and some to what? So, we know the shame and the contempt are the, the wicked. Caiaphas and his, and, his, and his gurus, right? But what about those now, some to everlasting life? Who are these people? All right, now, I give you one text now that... that right? Revelation chapter... 14 verse 13. The Bible says now, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Now this voice is the third member of the God of the Holy Spirit. I see your mic, right? Blessed are they 
Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from what? From henceforth. Yea, say the who? This is not the lower. Look at the S. It's an uppercase. This is the Holy Spirit now. The third moment he's putting his stamp. Right? That they may rest from their labors and do what? So the text says, if you die from henceforth, you receive a what? You're a blessing. If you die, now we're going to find what's the henceforth. From henceforth, you have a blessing. From hence behind, you ain't get no blessing. Now, what is this henceforth? Because this henceforth tells us some of the righteous who will get up in the partial. Amen. All right? I see your question. My, go ahead, my sister. I believe that why Jesus did that is because he want them to want to show them that he was the Messiah at that time because they never believed. All right, that exactly. He was the Messiah. That's right. why they didn't believe in anything he said. Mm -hmm. So you want to prove them that they have to see him when he, you know, he rides Comes. those days. Definitely. So I agree. They can prove I agree. I agree with you, right? So the henceforth must be, let me my point now, from yes. this forward. Yes. So in other words, if you die from behind, you don't get it. You see it. So this is crucial. This, if you can find out what this henceforth is, okay. you will know some of the righteous who will get up in the portion. Not all. Some. All right. I see your hand. Go ahead, Brother Cottrell. Those that die under the tree in Jamaica. All right. Brother Cottrell saw my notes, right? All right. Here it is now. So here it is now. Let me give you another, another. Um, so we learned that in the partial, right, God will resurrect those who pierced him and then some of the blessed. Just a, my point is this, it's just a select few. Not all the wicked, they get up, the majority gets up after the millennium. And not all the righteous, they get up at the second coming. Now let's open it up now, right now. Question 4 says now, what is this henceforth that is mentioned in Revelation chapter 14 verse 13? Now, again, the henceforth is critical for us to identify some to everlasting life. Now, we believe that the henceforth, as Brother Cottrell says, this henceforth is a strong allusion to the third angel's message. Now, there are three angels. We learned the third embraced the second, and the second embraced the what? First. So if you embrace the third, you must embrace all two. Right now, let me say this now. The partial, in your handout, is not the first general resurrection of the righteous at Christ's second coming, right? Not the second general of the wicked at the end of the millennium. They are not, we're not talking about this. It's a different one now. This is where the spirit of prophecy says now. This is what Brother Koshwell alluded to in your handout. She says now, the henceforth, all, now where I'm from, all means all. All who, die, all who have died in faith. Now, if you go and die in faith, you must live in faith. Of the what? Third angel what? Third angel's what? Messages, right? Now, what does the third angel's message say? I hear a lot of mumbling now and fumbling. And I, come on now. Huh? If any man worship the what? Who is the beast? Talk to me now. What church? The Catholic Church system. All right? And receive his mark. What's his mark? Sunday legislation. That's, so that's our dispensation. Right? Right? In his forehead or his hand shall drink of the what? Wine of the wrath, etc., etc. So, if you died actually keeping the seventh day Sabbath and all the other truths, you receive this blessing. Here it is now. All who have died in faith of the third angel's message come forth from the tomb. Glorified mean they are not going to die again to everlasting life. Right? To hear God's covenant of peace with those who have kept his law. Right? Look at it now. They which also what? That's the wicked, you see? Yes. Right? Those that mocked and derided Christ what? So in this text, she, she highlights two class of people. Just like Daniel 12 verse 3. 
some to everlasting life, which are these, the former, and some to shame and contempt, which are these. Then she says now, but then she adds another group, which is still the wicked. She says now, and the most violent opposers of his what? Whoa! So people who made it their mission to violently oppose this truth, this message, they will get up to see what they were opposing. Right? And his people are raised to behold him in glory to see the honor placed upon the royal, loyal and disobedient. This is a part of resurrection. Go ahead, sir. A question, uh, Elder. Where does um, the, the disciple, they, they, they come in? Okay, good question. The disciples, did they die under the third angel? No, there was no third angel mentioned. In, in, in the, the, the disciples died, I'd be conservatively, about, yeah, in the AD, AD 60. Christ went to heaven in AD 31. They, they lived about 30 years after Christ's death. So Peter, James, John, Paul, well, John lived about 90, 96 AD when the book was written, right? But all of the disciples died in the early part, mid part of the um, hundreds, right? So they would get up in what resurrection? The first. Not the special. The special is for a special people, right? Because there was no third angel hurled back. John didn't even write the book then, you know what I'm saying? Right? So, the fact of the matter is, most of these, these are our pioneers. Now, if you were going to date the third angel's message, we know that in 1844, there was a disappointment. So the first angel message, the second began to sound the summer of 1844. So when you date, when you date the third angel's message, you're dating it about 1847. Right? That was when the third angel began to sound. So guess what now? If you embraced the third angel in this time frame and you died, you died under the third, so you were qualified to be resurrected in the partial. You see what I'm saying? In other words, let's, put it, let's cut to the chase. Every faithful Seventh-day Adventist will get up in the partial. Because they died keeping the third angel's message. They died in faith on the third angel's message. In other words, let me, let, me, let me just make it very plain like Jane. The partial resurrection are only for people who have kept God's seventh day Sabbath and embraced the other eight, uh, two angels. In other words, it's only for Seventh-day Adventists. I'm sorry. The, the, the faithful ones. Not just the, not the, these liberals with their left and right theology. The faithful center Christocentric Adventists. Okay, you need a mic. You need a mic. You need a mic. You need a mic. We just want to make it very plain. We're not going to beat around the bush and try to philosophize. And we're going to be very... We're going to cut to the chase tonight. Go ahead, ma'am. I don't know if you had mentioned before. Um, the partial resurrection will be before the first Yes, I'm going to show you. Yes, yes. Okay. Right? So, so here it is now. If you died, all these people, Haskell, all these, if they're faithful, they'll get up in the partial. Now, Mrs. Y says this now. Another text. She says, uh, First Peter Prophecy 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, she says, Graves are open. And she's quoting Daniel 12 too. Many of them that sleep in the earth, of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to what? And then she says the same thing again now. All who died in faith of the what? Third angel's message. Come forth from the tomb glorified to hear God's covenant of peace with those who have what? Now, who are these people covenant of peace to hear? They are the 144,000. Who didn't die. You see know what I'm saying? So they're already alive because they, they've, they've survived the seven last plagues. Those get up in the park, they just join them. You see know what I'm saying? Right? And then she says, now, then she, 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 puts, she puts Revelation 1 7 there. There are they also which pierce him. Revelation 1 7, 
Those that mocked and derided Christ's dying agony and the most vulnerable pose of his truth and his people are raised to be held the glory. So she does combine two classes, Daniel says. Some to shame and contempt. So they get up, ah, they go back down to get up after the millennium. But the righteous get up to go up. You see the difference? This is serious theology. Now, this man name, his name is Taylor G. Bunch. This man was deep. <laughs> no, he was very, very deep. He was a Christian man. And he died under the third day. He will get up in the, in, in the partial resurrection. He was no liberal. He wrote several books. Good man. Solid man. And he wrote this in his book called, he has a book called The Revelation. This is from page 2 to a bunch says now. Those who died in faith during the closing what? That's us. Mark of the beast of the third angel's message will have an additional privilege of being called forth in the what? Not the first. Which immediately, sister, sister Vivine, precedes the what? Direction. Then he quotes Daniel 12, Daniel 12 too. These blessed, Revelation 14, 13, blessed are the dead, right? Rest from their what? And their works do follow them. Their reward is sweet. Rest in the contrast to those who have no rest in our day because they had rejected God's last message and worshipped the beast, which is the Catholic Church system, and his image, and his mark, which is Sunday instead of the Creator. This is us. This man was right in his theology. So I'm not here making something up. This is an old Adventist pioneer. Are you with me? Now, with all that said now, when does the special resurrection take place? We want to put a time frame. Now, Revelation chapter 16, we learned that it happens sometime under the voice of God. The voice of God happens right after probation closes, right? Under the seventh plague, which is hail. Not the voice of Jesus. It's the voice of God, which triggers... The partial resurrection. Now, so it happens. I'm, I'm going to show you when it happens. I'm going to give you a... Hold on. There's a text I want to show you. Um, I don't think I had it here. Okay. Go to Daniel. Open your Bibles. Daniel chapter... Daniel 12. I'm going I'm to show you when it happens. Daniel 12 verse 2. Verse 1. Look what event Daniel lists first before the partial. I should have put it on the screen, but it's not there. Daniel 12. Right? Verse 1. Are we there? He says, and at that time shall who? Now what Michael stand up? What event is he making reference to? No, come on, saints. This is, don't let me get up my pen tonight. Where's my pen? Reading pen. What? In the what? In the probation. Now, when probation closes, what is the next event that happens? The plagues! You see what I'm saying? So, so what, what, what Daniel is saying, okay, let's read the text now. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great what? Prince will do what? And there shall be a time of what? What makes it a time of trouble? Hey, let me go back to my screen again. Because, Brother Cashwell said it, because the plagues, this is where Michael stands up, is because the plagues are poured out. That, who does the plague affect? So it's not trouble for us. It's trouble for them. Now, our trouble is mental trouble. Are you with me? So now, we know that when Michael stands up, the plagues begin to fall. Look at, keep on reading now, right? And he says, uh, 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 and, 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 this is the nation, even at that time, and thy people shall be delivered, everyone found written in the what? What book is that? The book of life. Now, look what the next event is now. And many of them that what? In the what? Shall awake to what? And some to what? So question now, when would you place the partial resurrection? After, the pl after or during the plagues. You see me? Because when Michael stands up, we know the plagues are falling. Then he says now, the resurrection takes place. 
So the partial takes place right after Michael stands up and we know when the voice of God is sounded, the, this happens under the seventh plague. That's the voice of God. Right? So all these events happen after Michael stands up. Christ talks on the censor. The voice of God takes place under the seventh plague. So therefore we expect the partial resurrection under the seventh plague. Before Jesus comes. A short, there ain't going to be no one year. A short duration. Right? So what's the answer for it now? Or I don't, if it's a fill in, I don't know. It happens. It happens under the seventh plague of the seven last plague. Plagues a short time before the second coming. Or you can put, it happens after Michael stands up. You're still right. Not before. So you look for the partial right after Michael stands up, not under the first plague, way down under the seventh plague. Are you with me? Is that clear? Do you see it in the scripture? All right, very good. Right now. Okay, go ahead, sir. But, uh, I'm just thinking, when the partial rejection happens, mm -hmm. all the wicked that were unhurt, apart from the 144,000, they would have died too. Not yet. N not yet. Remember now, the brightness destroys who? The wicked. Some because not, not all the wicked will die under the plagues. Some will survive the plagues because the Bible says that the brightness destroys the what? So if the plagues destroy them, why would Christ destroy them again? So some will survive the plagues and those who are... Now the thing that will make us not be destroyed with his brightness, we would have gotten the third baptism of the Holy Spirit. That kind of force feel. You see what I'm saying? So, on this, this is when the voice of God takes place. Now you see, the next event is the second coming. So it's not, it's not a long time, you know. It's a short duration than the second coming. Now, somebody say, well, what's the difference? If, why partial and the first? Why not have one? I'm going to show you the big difference. Right? So here we are now, right, with that, with that event. All right, now. This is where it gets technical now because the shepherd's rod, they have a primer on this. Question now, right? Will any in the special resurrection assist in the proclamation of the third angel's message? All right. I'm going to show you why the shepherd's rod hold that theory. Go to Daniel 12. I'm going to show you something. Well, the answer is no. Now, Brethren, you must understand sometimes the Bible was not written in chronological order. Yes. Would you agree with Amen. that? Amen. And sometimes God wants us to think. Yeah. That's why he gave us a brain. Now, a little here, a little there. I need, um, Sister Pearl, I need for you to get the mic. I want you to read Daniel 12, 1, 2, and 3. Now, read it and I'm going to show you where the shepherds get this thesis from. Right? Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Daniel 12, 1, 2, and 3. You have the King James Version? Yes. Right, go ahead, ma'am. And at that time shall Michael stand up, uh -huh. the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Uh -huh. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never were since there was a nation, even to that same time. Mm -hmm. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. All right. Now, this event predicts the close of probation. Do you agree? Yes. When Michael stands up, is there any more witnessing? No. So we know that this text is saying no more witnessing, right? Now, read the second verse now. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, mm -hmm. some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right, so then it says the partial. But this is where the shepherd's rod go wrong. Verse 3 alludes to witnessing. Read verse 3 now. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Uh -huh. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So they say that verse 3, verse 3 is evangelism. Because you're turning people to what? Right. Righteousness. So they say then, if, if you're going to read continuity, when Michael stands up, there will still be some witnessing going on because verse 3 says somebody will turn somebody to righteousness. But that is not correct. 
it is not chronological. Sometimes you got you be able to be careful. Because if you take that premise, then what you're saying is then when the plagues begin to fall, there's hope for people. Th that's not true. That's not Ivan's theology. So the answer, so you go back to the question then, and, and then so the question is now, will they the, they teach now, the rods teach that during the plagues, those who get up in the partial will assist the living, the 144, in proclaiming the third angel's message. My dear friends, that is heresy. There's still hope. Right? And then they use that text, and this is not in your hand, but take a picture. The, the, the rods, we had a whole lecture on this anyway, so you could go back to your, your, your three. The rods, shepherd's rods, lecture teaches that Ellen White, who is dead, and she will get up in the partial, right? And the rest of the pioneers who are dead, which that and the third, will be resurrected from their grave to assist the living sin, which is us, to finish the work of the third angel. Now question, when does the partial take place? Right after Michael says it is what? That's a time frame. But we know there's no witnessing going on. The, the pigs already destroyed the earth. You see what I'm saying? So the rods are wrong. It's not scriptural, it's, it's not, not even linguistical, not even hermeneutical, not even logistical. It's just, it's, just, it's just unfortunately wrong. And then now, you know, they try to use this, jot this down, they use volume 7 to, to support their stand. Now, jot it down, it should be in your hand. Now, they, volume 7 says now, the battle cry is sounding along the line, and every soldier of the cross pushed to the front not in self-sufficiency, but in meekness and lowliness, and with firm faith in God. Your work, my work, will not cease with this life. For a little while, ye may rest in the grave, but when the call comes, they interpret this call as the resurrection. We shall, in the kingdom, take up the work once more. Now, so they say this quotation supports work after the partial. Now, this is the question. Which kingdom? Because you have the kingdom of grace and the kingdom of glory. Now, question. Will we be working in the kingdom of glory? Yes, we will. She says we will be teaching the plan of salvation to others. So, I am suggesting that this work here in the kingdom is on earth. How do I know? Go back to the chart. Beloved, probation would have closed. Ain't no preaching going on here. And now, I could see if they said the partial took place over here. You see what I'm saying? Because we still have time to witness. But once Michael stands up, ain't no Bible study, no PowerPoint, no handout, no fill in the blanks, none of that. It is, the jig is up. So the shepherd's rod are dead wrong. Those who get up in the partial will not be assisting anybody in no kind of evangelism. It is finished. Go ahead, sir. A, a quick thought here. So, um, concerning um, uh, the point when uh, the plague, that the, some of the wicked, in other words, would have, will not totally perish, mm -hmm. and the plague, thus there will remain mm -hmm. those who will also be slain at the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, my theory is, and it's just my personal, is that the fact today we have people exceeds wickedness. Mm -hmm. In other words, there are people who are more wicked than some. Yes. Then I'm thinking that, you know, the Lord would have a way to deal with them mm -hmm. and, uh, and on a sudden immediate base. Yes. And then there are those who are not so, you know, quote, that wicked, but mm -hmm. just rebel against God's yeah. commandment, will see uh, um, the the, the literal coming of Christ, but at the same time, simultaneously yeah. will be slain by his yeah. presence. Yeah. So it's kind of my theory. Yeah, according to your work, so shall your reward be, the Bible says, right? So, beloved, we know for a fact that when the partial takes place, it is true, it takes place under the seventh plague, under the voice of God, it is true, all of our pioneers will get up, the righteous ones and some of the wicked ones also, right? Haskell, Ellen White, James Wright, Charles Kinney, first African-American to be ordained as a minister, right? Oh, and there's a whole lot of them. Um, Rachel Preston Oaks, all of them. 
right? Um, and a knight, all of them, right? But they will not be assisting the 144 in any work. How do I know? Probation has closed. That is clear. Now, as we close now, which member of the Godhead causes the special resurrection? Well, it, well, it's the voice of God anyway. That's a given. It's the voice of God out of the temple, right? But just to give you more Bible, right? In John chapter 5, this is a, this is a, this is a part, this is a powerful text we often overlook. The Bible says now, John 5, 19 says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father what? So whatever the God the Father do, God the Son will do. For what things, so, what things soever he, he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. You see it? Like a copycat for like a word. Monkey see, monkey do for like a word, right? For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may, may marvel. Look at verse 21 now, says now. For as the Father raiseth up the who? Whoa! And quickeneth them, even so the Son will what? And then he says now, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and is now when the dead shall hear the voice of the who? And what? They shall what? Now, question now. Do you see two resurrection in this? I see the... What do you see? You can just say, yeah. Tell me what you see. Okay, Sister, um, sister Perk has a... Take the mic, please. Tell me what you see. Because I see, I see a whole lot of stuff. We got glasses. We are seeing stuff, right? <laughs> Tell me what you see in this text now. I, I see the son having a special group of people that he wants to raise up. All right. And, and what would you call a resurrection? I'd call that the special resurrection. No. The Think about second? it now. What would you call it? Look at the text again. Look at, you see okay. the text in the mic. Okay, Look at the text. And... All right. Give her the mic. Help, help her out. Help her out. Help, help her Give her the mic now. All right. Tell me what, it, it's, it's in there enough. It's right there. Tell me what you see, Sister, Sister Vivian. Take the mic now. Talk to the mic, man. You're on YouTube, man. 20, 21. Verse 21 shows the fa Father raises up the dead. All right. Okay, that's one resurrection. Uh-huh. The Son quickeneth whom he will. So, uh, and but, then, so I believe that um, the first one is the, the voice of the Father mm -hmm. that um, does the partial. Uh-huh. And then the Son comes, does the, the, other, the other one, the, the, the what first, would you call the it? The first one. Because, because, um... Remember in the first resurrection, they see um, Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of uh -huh. heaven with, with all the host of heaven and all of that. All right. So. A good point. Can you see? Let, let, let me, where my, uh, where my thing is. Oh, I can't find it, but let me, let me use one of these. Okay. She's right. You see, the, God the Father produces the, the, the partial. And right after the partial, the Son now produces the first. Are you with me? So there are three resurrections we learned. There is a first, or it should be there is a partial, there is the first, and then there is the second. God the Father produces the partial, God the Son produces the first, and a thousand years later, it's God the Son who produces the second, which is the, the resurrection of damnation. There are three resurrections. Again, three we learned. The partial, the first, and the second. So the answer is filled in now. Who produces the partial resurrection? It is God the Father who does the partial. Sister Francis, go, no, Sister Perk, go ahead. So, so, the, so are you saying then that verse 21 uh -huh. is in order? Yes. Okay. Okay. 21 is the partial. Okay. You see? So it's 21 a, at the top of it, for as the Father, father. raised up the dead, uh -huh. and them, then the Son... Okay. Exactly. So you, right. you see the partial. Yes. Now right after. Yes. You see the second, the first resurrection, which Jesus says, "Awake, awake, awake, ye that dwell." It's all through the Bible. If we just look with an intent, so it's God the Father, right? God the Father who does the partial. Now, um, beloved, there is hope for us, and I want to close on this point. You know, there is hope. There was a family who who lost. Um, 
They lost their husband, lost his wife, children, their mother. And you, you could imagine how that is, man. I mean, their mother will not be seen again and the house is empty. No more mom, mother's voice. And, and Ellen White wrote a letter to comfort this family. Now, by the way, the church was, you know, wasn't really established yet as a name, but we had taken form. She was already well a prophet, right? They're keeping the Sabbath. So, so she wrote a letter to the father to comfort the father and also the children. Sister Donna, can you read for me, please, this letter? What she wrote, and we're close on this now. She says, dear brother. Dear brother, uh -huh. I hardly know what to say to you. Uh -huh. The news of your wife's death was to me overwhelming. Uh -huh. I could hardly believe it and can hardly believe it now. Uh -huh. God gave me a view last Sabbath night, which I will write. So she's writing to what kind of people? What are they, what are they called? Not from the keepers, Sabbath keepers. Last Sabbath. Keep on reading now, right? I saw that she was sealed. Uh oh So she, if she's sealed, what did she have? What was she keeping? The Sabbath. The Sabbath. Amen. See with the Holy Spirit. Seal keeping the seven-day Sabbath the right way also. Amen. Keep on reading, right? I saw that she was sealed and would come up at the voice of God. Stop there! When does the voice of God take place? No, when does when the voice of God take place? On our uh, plague? Seventh the plague. seventh plague! Are you with me? So this woman is correct theologically and biblically. Keep on reading, please. And stand upon the earth and would be with the 144,000. Oh, so she would get up and join the 144 who did not die. You see that? Now this happened in 1850. This woman is decomposed and rotten. All her children had died. But she still died under the third. So she has the um, imprimatur of the partial. Go ahead, please read now, right? I saw we need not mourn for her. Uh huh. She would rest in the time of trouble. Oh, oh, what trouble is that now? That can be a little time of trouble. Or when the plagues, because remember, the partial takes place right when the plagues are. It okay. is done. What is done? The plagues are done. Plagues are done. Seven. Exactly. Keep on reading, please. And all that we could mourn for was our loss uh. in being deprived of her company. Wow. I saw her death would result in good. Remember that Daniel Lord, that their works do follow them. Follow Keep on them. reading, please. I warn F and the rest of the children to prepare to meet Jesus. And then... They will meet their mother again. Wow. Never more to be parted. Mm -hmm. Oh, children, will you heed her fateful warning that she gave you while she was with you? Mm. And let not all her prayers that she has offered up to God for you be a water spilt, be as water spilt upon the ground. Uh -huh. Get ready to meet Jesus, yes. and all will be well. Amen. Give your hearts to God, and do not rest today unless you know that you love Jesus. What a comforting letter. Listen, if we were to give these to more people who died in the church, there will be more comfort. So you see, the partial is not for everybody. Now, as Sister Vivine raised a question, and I'm going to just two minutes and show you what is the difference between What's the big deal? And this is the big deal now. You see, those people who get up in the first resurrection, they do not see the coming of Jesus. That's the big difference. When the first resurrection takes place, Christ is already here. And he says, awake, 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 ye that sleep in the earth, and they are resurrected. It is only people who are alive. So what God does, he has the partial to take place just before his son comes. So all those who preach the second coming. Could you imagine those all pioneers preached it, sang about it, and didn't see it? That would be like a whammy, man. It's not going to happen again anyway. There's no more rewind. You, can, no, you know how we have these little things in our home? You can record a TV show. You're not going to have that. It will never be repeated again. Because Nahum says, affliction shall not what rise what? So God blesses all of those who preach the true second coming. 
Not no secret rapture. He will make them see it and they will be caught up. The wicked will see it and they'll go down and get up a thousand years way down here. We are a blessed people. Okay, last comment, sister. Sister Vivian has the last comment. We're going to make a lady speak tonight. Last comment. Go ahead, ma'am. Hold on. Let me get, get, get the mic. All right. I want to use the scripture All right, give me something to back up what you All just right, said. All right, go ahead. What uh, scripture is it? 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16. Uh -huh. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, uh -huh. with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, uh -huh. and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh -huh. so, so this... So this is um, saying what you just said, mm -hmm. that um, when Jesus Christ comes, um, the dead. Th th um, those, those would not, th they will not see him coming. No. They no. will not see him they coming. They will not see it. Yeah. He's Jesus here Christ. and he resurrects them. Yeah. And early writings does spell it out in graphic detail. Thank you very much for that text, Sister Vivian. You hit the mark where I just missed the mark. To God be the glory. Amen. Great things he has done. Amen. Were you blessed tonight? Saints, God is good. Let us be faithful and let us stand as we sing. Uh, uh, um, there's a land that is, there's a land of pure delight where bliss eternal reigns. In for nine. Let's sing 449 as we lift our evening's offering. This was written by one of um, the early church um, authors. It's a very good song. In 449, never part again. Island of light where bliss eternal reigns in the night day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. We're traveling, we're traveling through. Emmanuel's ground, we soon shall hear the trumpet sound, and soon we with Jesus reign, and never, never part again. What? What? Never part again? No, never part again. What? Never part again. No, never part again. And soon we, Jesus reign. And never, never part again. Last stanza. Could, could but, but stand where Moses stood and view the landscape. Not all these words pretended good could ever charm us more. We're traveling through Emmanuel's ground. We soon shall the trumpet sound and soon. What? Never part again. No, never part again. What? Never part again. No, never part again. And soon we with Jesus reign. And never, never part again. Let us pray. Father in heaven. Oh, tonight, didn't our hearts burn within us as we see what you have in store for those who die in faith under the third angel's message? Lord, we have all professed to be Seventh-day Adventists. We have all professed to be keeping your laws and your statutes and judgment. Help us, O oh God, to live what we profess to believe. 
And whether waking or sleeping, we will occur that special blessing is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Now let the words of our mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen and amen.